Hey, it's Ellen Christina of Embassy Promotions and I help influencers and creators future-proof their wealth and their brand by building digital assets. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss why all smart influencers have started businesses. Now, you may be familiar with the likes of the Kardashians. I'm just using them as an example because like everyone knows who the Kardashians are. So obviously the Kardashians started off really just as influencers, right? And now they all have kind of multi-million dollar brands. They've got Skims, Kylie Cosmetics, Good American. Um, I can't think of any of the others off the top of my head, but, um, and you know, we're kind of in this, in this, in this kind of era, 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 era of like, um, social media personalities you know gaining a lot of popularity and then suddenly they come out with these businesses um you know rihanna i mean okay she's not an influencer she's a celebrity but she's um got fenty beauty um we have um molly may has obviously got filtered by molly may um selena gomez obviously another celebrity she's got i think is it rare beauty jess hunt um, I don't know how you pronounce her beauty brand. I think it's called Refi. She's got Refi Beauty. Um, so we're kind of seeing oh, another one. Actually, I'll um, tell you because it's interesting. Is um, I don't know if anyone follows Rosie Connolly Quinn. Um, she's got a, a like a I don't know what you call it like a streetwear kind of brand, like a leisure leisure wear brand. Um, I think it's called Fourth Arc. Um, so we're kind of, and she's not the only one, there's like a ton of influencers, even like way smaller influencers who have launched their own kind of micro beauty brands, um, you know, fashion, clothing, fake tan, um, beauty, skincare, wellness, supplements, um, even some influencers have gone down the fitness route. So we have like Louise Thompson from Made in Chelsea. I don't know if anyone um, used to watch Made in Chelsea or still does. If you're in the UK, you'll probably be more familiar with it. Basically, it's a life reality TV show that followed a bunch of very attractive posh people around Chelsea in London um, and followed their lives. And Louise Thompson was obviously, she's not on the show anymore. Uh, she's kind of moved on to her own endeavors and she started a family and things like that. But she now has a fitness app. and. Louise Thompson was never a, a fitness influencer. She was on a reality TV show. Um, so, you know, she's kind of gone down the fitness route. You've got um, influencers doing like um, manifestation, stuff to do with manifestation, stuff to do with spirituality, um, yoga, Pilates, fitness, health, wealth, relationships, whatever it is. So we're kind of seeing this trend of influencers starting their own businesses. Now, some of them, like the majority of the ones that I've given you as, um examples are obviously physical product businesses right a brand of fake tan skincare beauty makeup clothes um but we are not interested in e-com because those influencers who have started those e-com brands they have access to a whole wealth of contacts and investors who you do not have have uh have contact with okay um, you, you don't, you don't have, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You don't have access to them. Um, because you know, you're not that established and people don't know who you are and you probably aren't whining and dining with investors and people who can give you $250,000 or pounds or euros to start your own clothing brand. So what do you do then if you kind of want to avoid the e-com and you want to avoid the, the massive overheads and the debts and the inventory and the shipping you know the logistical nightmare of shipping overseas and all of that well you start your own digital business selling digital products where you can um use kind of the expertise that you already have sell a digital product it gets delivered automatically there's nothing that eats into your profit there for the most part it's all passive unless you're doing something where you have to physically show up to deliver on it uh, for the most part, it's all passive, so it's all passive income. So I can't even remember what the title of this video was. Was it why? Yeah, why all smart influencers have started businesses. So um, we have influencer here. Influencer and 
let's put here. This is their social media. I always use these as examples, but let's say TikTok, I mean, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Um, let's just do that for now. Um, and all of these little people here are followers. So you have the influencer who is posting. Influencers are only really using social media, really like influencers are designed to be big on social media. So you have influencer posting content on these platforms. All of these followers are finding said influencer going onto these platforms, follows, likes, shares, subscribes, engagement, all of the good stuff. But these people, these followers, are what makes the owners of these platforms successful. Because the more users that, that use these platforms, the more people sign up and use it, the more data these platform owners have. And if you are a company that acquires a lot of user, consumer, buyer, purchaser, whatever data, woo, that pays big. Like, I'm not sure how much Meta is actually valued at now, but I know that Mark Zuckerberg paid Instagram two billion dollars to acquire it so it's definitely it's probably worth more than that right now right but you as the influencer you're only really aiding this process this process the one with the platform owners and the data and the money you're not doing anything to have your own slice of it do you see what I mean so the reason why smart influencers build businesses is because they build businesses for assets. A, A, give me an A, give me an S, give me an S, give me an E, give me a T, give me an S. Um, what are assets? Assets are, is anything that exists that make you money. Much like a property, bricks and mortar is an asset. It makes you money, okay? An asset, a company is an asset. It generates cash. It generates cash flow. Okay, I don't know if anyone's ever read Rich Dad Poor Dad. If you have, good, because you're going to understand what I'm about to tell you. Um, anything that generates cash is cash flow, and then you can use cash flow to go and buy more assets that generate more cash flow, and that's supposedly how you become really properly rich. Not just cash rich, but asset rich because assets create money, companies create money. Um, you know, that's why you want your own one. That's why, oh, I'm not blended, that's bad. That's why you want your own asset. That's why smart influencers are building their own assets in the form of companies, businesses, because they can then use all of this as leverage. Not just, it's not just fleeting then. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to spend time posting on Instagram so that I can make a little bit of commission, but grow someone else's asset, the company that whose product I'm promoting, plus Meta itself. Then you're raising everyone's, the value of everyone's asset apart from your own because you don't have one. So by getting these people, they can stay on here, but by getting these people off of those platforms, and into your own asset, which is your own company. And in order to hold and acquire that data, you need a list. So people consent, they join your mailing list, or when they buy something, their details get held. And they usually tick to box to say they're happy for that to happen. It's in the terms and conditions somewhere. And that is what builds your asset that's a business, okay? And typically, you can't have this without having a business you can't just be an influencer and say hey i want an asset that makes me money everyone give me your email lists because everyone's going to be like no like why do you give someone your email address because typically you've got something in return you've joined a you've joined an email list for a discount code you've joined an email list because you want updates 
from that company or from that industry or whatever you've <coughs> excuse me you joined an email list because somebody said hey i'll give you this free thing if you join if, if you give me your email and that's what you've done so and you can't really be doing that giving like exchanging um things for contact details if you don't have a business not really so that's why all smart influencers have their own businesses right keep watching because in the next video i'm gonna tell you how to monetize as an influencer without brand deals so we talked here about oh you know you're creating content for brand deals but what if you you can carry on doing brand deals but what if you're like i don't want to i don't want to rely on brand deals forever that's fine because in the next video we're going to talk about how you can monetize your audience without brand deals i'll see you there